Hi, I'm Ron Bates, Senior Pastor of The Light Church. Thank you so much for tuning in to our podcast today. I hope this message inspires you to love God, love people, and shine His light. Hey. Hey, it's good to have all of you here today. And, uh, you know, last week we had Kobe... And uh, Shani here, how many of you here for that? Uh, enjoyed having them here. And, you know, that's one of the, the uh, ministries that you guys, we as a church, support. So thank you for that. And another one that we help support is Harvest Now, uh, Lisa and Guinea Anderson. They, are at, they actually live in Kingwood, Texas. So when they're in town, sometimes they'll call. Guinea called me this morning, uh, texted me and said, hey, can I come worship you with you guys this morning? So at first I said no, but then he talked me into it. And, <laughs> But it's good to have Guinea Anderson in the house today. I'm going to have him come and greet you guys. And I tell you, he's got a lot going on. Just so thankful for their ministry. And uh, yeah, just say hello, Guinea. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, church. It's so good to be with all of you today. You all look so good. Thank you for making the time to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It is really, really a time that we are living in, a critical time that we are living in. You know, it's so important for every believer to be connected to the house of God, with the local church. Yes, amen. amen. I'm, I'm, you know, I travel all over the world with my wife and I. We team up together. We travel and minister all over the world. But, you know, we are connected to a local church. And I'm so thankful for each one of you. And if you are visiting here today, this is a great church to be connected. Amen? Amen. Because this church is making a tremendous impact in this community, in our state of Texas, but also around the world. Do you know every week when you give your tithes and offering, when you give towards missions, this church, Light Fellowship, you all support our ministry every month. And it is so, so good. Pastor Ron, Pastor Eva, thank you so much you know, for being so kind and generous to us, us and to us, the people that we serve. My wife, Lisa, and I, you know, we travel with, we have hundreds of pastors. We have 525 pastors and missionaries that work with our ministry. We work in about 25 different nations and, uh, you know, planted over 527 churches in Asia, mostly wow, in come Asia. On, come on. Okay. That's good. Okay. And so God is doing great things just through this pandemic. I know we all have uh, experienced many difficulties. Some of you have lost jobs. But listen, I want to encourage you today. God is still on the throne. Oh, yeah. God is still on the throne. He knows you yes, where amen, you are. He amen. has placed you. and He is watching over you. He's watching over your family. He's watching over your children, grandchildren, everything that concerns you. So trust God with your, all your heart. Trust God with your life. You know, I gave my heart to the Lord when I was 15 years old. When I was 17, God called me into ministry. When I was 21, Pastor, Pastor, uh, Pastor Ron, when I was 21 years old, I went to Nepal, a country that I have never known and I've never been before. But that's where God called me to go preach the gospel. If you preach the gospel in Nepal, you will go to prison for three years. And if you baptize Christians, you will go to prison for six years. But that's where I went, gave my life serving God for six years in Nepal, started many churches, evangelized the entire city and many villages all over the mountains, planted many churches. But that's where my beginning was. And over the years, over 40 years, God has done great things. And it's just wonderful to see what God would do with your life. Amen, amen. Amen. With your life. All of you young people, I'm so proud of you. Your pastors, your parents are so proud of you. But most of all, God is proud of you. Yes, amen. He is looking at you and he says, there is my child. There is my son. There is my daughter. He is looking at you. You have great future. Parents, your children have great future. Grandparents, your children have great future. God has raised us up. Listen, there is a harvest that is coming. There is a harvest that is yes, coming amen. and it is right it. here, right now. God is shaking every nation. He's shaking mm. everything that needs to be shaken. And I tell you, around the world, there is a hunger for God that we have never seen. I have never seen in my life. And I, I hear of many churches getting all filled up. People's hearts are after God. You know how it is mm -hmm. not to be able to come to church, mm -hmm. right? And now it is so good that you can come and you can worship God. Amen. Places like in Nepal, places like in India, places like in China, where people f suffer much persecution. And yet, they are ready to go to church and give their life for Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Thank you so much for praying for us. Thank you for loving us and the people we serve. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Guinea. We Thank love you, Lisa, and what you guys do. They do tremendous Thank things. You. And 
Uh, so many gifts. One of the gifts we're still praying for Guinea is the gift of encouragement. You know, he just needs a... Hey, man, if I'm down, I'm going to call Guinea. Hey, Guinea, uh, can you just talk to me for a minute? <laughs> you know, so encouraging. So thank And you know, as he said, and as I said, you guys, thank you for your giving. Because listen, God didn't call me to Nepal. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. <laughs> didn't call me. But, but he called somebody. And I'm glad that we can be a part of that. So your giving helps go towards that. But you can also go to harvestnow.org, stay in touch with them, get to sign up for the newsletter, and give to them. Bless them. Matter of fact, getting ready to go to Vietnam, correct? And uh, bless pastors and children over there. So give God praise for Harvest Now and what he's doing there. Father, we just come to you this morning with a grateful heart. We thank you, Father, that for all that you are, and all that you do, Father, we can't even express the right amount of gratitude that is due your name, Father. But Father, we are attempting to give you the, the gratitude that you deserve. Father, help us to understand, not just in this week where we gather with family and, and have food and say a prayer and, and, and Father, call ourselves thankful. But let us be a thankful person, no matter what we face, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I've entitled this this morning, Thankfulness, and I have a tagline here, thankfulness is a big deal. Look at somebody and say, thankfulness is a big deal. You know, thankfulness is a big deal, and you know, as uh, Ava mentioned, maybe you're not feeling very thankful. Maybe this year has got you down, and you know, I don't know about you, but when I go around, it seems to me like Christmas stuff is going up extra early this year, and it's like, I'm not even in the mood yet. Come on, right? But we should be in the Christmas spirit. Matter of fact, next week I'm going to start a series called It's Christmas Time, whether you like it or not. No, I'm not going to call it that, but it's Christmas time. <laughs> it's Christmas time, right? And it's like, oh, I'm not ready for Christmas time. Well, you need to be. But we need to be in the Christmas spirit because the Christmas spirit is still alive. Come on. The spirit of Christmas is still alive. So anyway, we'll talk about that next week, but maybe you're not thankful either, you know, but we have so much to be thankful for. It's a big deal with God. And Thanksgiving is not just a, a week that we come together and be, you know, it should be an ongoing attitude that we work at. And it's true, we have to work at being thankful. I mean, we tell our kids, say thank you, thank you. You know, we, we start learning from a young age to be thankful. You know, so we, and God wants us to be thankful. It's a big deal with God. I think it's easier to focus on things we're not thankful for. If we're not careful, they can consume us and, and, and be in our mind. I mean, I'm not thankful for COVID-19. Come on, I'm not. You know, there's some things that, and I, and I believe this, uh, from, I, I thought this from the beginning, there's some good things that can come from any challenge. But I'm not thankful for, I'm not thankful for any sickness. It's like, it's like maybe if you're, not, if you're dealing with it, it is. But it's like, no, there's no other sickness out there now. It's just COVID-19. You either have that or nothing. No, you know. <laughs> but it's like. I'm not thankful for that. I'm not thankful for the state of our country right now. Come on. But I'm thankful that no matter what I'm not thankful for, I can still find reason to be thankful. Because I still have a God and my hope is in him. You know, I'm not thankful that the back window in my house broke a couple of weeks ago and the bid came back to replace it for $800. There's some things I'm not thankful for. Really, God, thankful for all things? This $800 window to be replaced, you know? You know, these daily, anybody have daily surprises? You know, I didn't expect that today, but I'm thankful, you know? <laughs> Got to focus on things we are thankful for. I'm thankful for God, health, provision, wisdom that he brings. I'm thankful for Ava, my lovely wife. I'm thankful for family, I'm thankful that this year, in spite of it all, I have a granddaughter. Come on. You know? I'm thinking of the things I'm thankful for. You know? And there was a time that Ava and I, y'all know the story, that we didn't think we were even going to be able to have kids. You know, the first 10 years of our marriage, we weren't, ha we weren't able to have kids. And, and the thought of it, there's thoughts that go through your mind that I'm never going to have kids and grandkids. I have a grandchild. Somebody give God praise. 
You know, when you, if you really try to focus on the things that you're thankful for, it's like the other things aren't that big a deal, but thankfulness is a big deal. I'm thankful for church family. I'm thankful that in difficult times, I have uh, friends in the church that I can call and and we can help one another out. I'm thankful that we can come together in difficult times and praise God in unison and he blesses unity. Come on. I'm thankful for these things. I'm thankful that I got a second bid that came in at $400 for my window. I'm thankful for my $400 window. You see how that works? Yeah, it's like a game. It's like, you know, well, it's going to be 800, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Come on. Hey, I had a lesson years ago in car sales. I, I, um, I got a part-time job selling cars. And, you know, they give you this sales lesson. You know, today it's like, you know, we just, there's the prices, you know, the internet's changed everything. But back in the day, you know, you went in and there was a price on it. You're not going to pay that price. Come on, right? If you paid the price on the window sticker, <laughs> We're going to laugh at you, you know, or feel sorry for you, not paying that price. And you always feel like, man, I want to go in and I'm going to just going to tell them, I'm, I'll give you this much for the car. And, if the, and why can't you do that? Why can't you just go in and say, I'm going to give you this much? They say, okay, you sign the paper and leave because you would not be happy if you did that. Because if they did that, you'd think it was so easy. I could have got it cheaper. Come on, Paul, look at him. He knows what I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> Sometimes knowing what could have been helps you appreciate what is. Come on. Come on. Thankfulness is a big deal. Romans 1.20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, listen to this, nor were thankful. That's a big deal. Not that they just didn't know God. They weren't thankful for God. For the things that they had, not recognizing that they actually came from the creator. But be, and because of that, listen, because of all this, what happened? Became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Where are we today because we're not thankful and we don't recognize God and his goodness? Come on. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Lord, don't let that be us. If it is, Lord, reverse us. Come on. So I want to talk today about things that thankfulness can do for you. And the first one is this. Thankfulness is a daily attitude. You know, it's a daily attitude. It's a trait that all believers should have. We should be a thankful people. We should get up in the morning thankful that I put two feet on the ground. Thankful that I'm breathing air. Thankful that no matter what, God is on my side. We should be thankful that knowing that it doesn't matter what happens in this world, I'm just passing through. We should have a perspective that causes us to be thankful no matter what. Because we have a reason to be thankful in our soul of souls. Deep inside. Reminds me of Horatio Spafford. Some of you may recognize the name. Horatio Spafford, born in 1828, listen listen to this, he became a lawyer and and invested in Chicago, very wealthy man. He lost his three-year-old son to scarlet fever. Then the Chicago fire happened in 1871, and it crippled him economically. Horatio Spafford, okay, does he sound like he would be a thankful man? He planned to move to England, so he sent his wife and his three daughters ahead But during the time that they were gone, we're we're talking about the 1800s, right? He received a telegram from his wife, and this is what it said, saved alone. The ship went down, and his wife was the only one that survived. Already Already lost his son, economically destroyed, trying to start over, and he gets this telegram. Does he sound like he would be a thankful man? So in route to meet his wife, when the ship he was on passed the area where it was thought that the ship that his uh, wife and daughters were on, he wrote down these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, 
though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ, yes, he has, has regarded my helplessness, helpless estate and has shed his blood for my soul. Give him praise. Come on. Give God praise. You know, I can't even imagine that. I mean, somebody like that, you know, I've said this before, like Joseph's life, we would give him a pass. I understand why you're not thankful, right? But even in all of the tragedy, he recognized that God is still the creator. I still have hope in him. My soul is still secure in him. Come on. So we always have reason to be thankful no matter what the day brings. Psalm 118, 24, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's an attitude. So thankfulness is a daily attitude that we should have. Number two is this, thankfulness acknowledge, acknowledges dependency. It acknowledges that you, you, know, you couldn't have done it without someone's help. When we're thankful to God, we're saying, thank you, God, I couldn't do it alone. I need your help. Dependency, a reliance or trust on someone or something that, that says, I couldn't do it without you. That's what thankfulness does. Psalm 101, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with, thanks, with singing. Know that the Lord, he is good. What a statement there. Just know he's good. No matter what. It is he who has made us, going back to the idea of the creator and being thankful, and not ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. When we come into his presence or get up in the morning, let's do it with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. These are reasons we can be thankful. His mercy is everlasting. You know, think about this. Anybody here ever need mercy? Anybody need a lot of it? Anybody gonna need some more of it? it he doesn't run out of it. I'm thankful for that. His truth endures to all generations. Colossians 2, 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Number three, what does thankfulness do for us? It acknowledges appreciation. You've heard it, an attitude of gratitude. It acknowledges appreciation. You know, we live in a culture that is growing in an attitude of entitlement. You know, the right to something. I deserve this. Something is deserved or demanded. But listen, 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 I'm not picking on any, any generation, okay? I think some generation, especially maybe the current one, gets picked on more than they should. I'm not talking about millennials or Gen X or anything like that. I'm talking about the McDonald's. <clears throat> Come on. I'm talking about the McDonald's. Those that grew up in a fast food generation. Come on. Think that we should have it our way. <laughs> However you want it. If we don't get it our way, we're pretty upset. Matter of fact, I was thinking about this. McDonald's, who, and, and, and I've got a prize. Who can tell me what the first fast food chain in America was? And I have a McDonald's gift card. If you can guess what the first fast food chain was. No, it's not McDonald's. What gave you that idea? Not Whataburger. Wait, did anyone say? No. Did anybody say White Castle? Did you really? Did you really? Okay, I'm, all right. Here, I'm not going to call you a liar in front of all these people here. But I'll call you later. I'll talk to you later, though. <laughs> now, how many of you felt like you were entitled to that card? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The McDonald's. Come on. I think if I don't get it my way, I'm going to be upset. You know? Growing up, you know, something owed or deserved. You know, I... I we, we forget how thankful we should be that I didn't have to get up this morning and go milk the cow, kill an animal, pick a vegetable. Come on. Come on. It's a benefit. 
Listen, I expect good service when I go places. How many of you expect good service? But can I just ask you as a favor? Listen, if you call yourself a member of this church, I'm gonna ask you a favor. Do not have a fast food meltdown, come on. Because you didn't get mustard and you, got, you, wanted, or you wanted mustard and got ketchup, come on. Have you ever seen somebody having a fast food meltdown, a McDonald? Come on. One in my way. Be thankful. So I think about this, you know, don't get it our way. We're pretty, I deserve it. What happens when we don't feel like God delivered like we should have had him deliver? Come on. Well, how, how do we respond to that? What if God gives you a different job than the one you ordered? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Not the job I ordered. How about this? Be thankful. Come on, give him praise. <clears throat> you see, here's the a, here's a thing. I, I want good, good service, and I, I, we ought to be the people. When, when, look, when the server comes to your table and, and gives you more tea, coffee, whatever, say thank you. Say thank you. You appreciate them. You know, it's kind of like, look, as a, as a believer, as a child of God, I have faith that there's certain things that God allows us to have because of his mercy and grace. We're entitled to it because of his promise. It doesn't mean I demand it from God, but it's allowed to me as a believer, and I want to grab hold it by faith with the authority that I have in Christ. Come on. But I'm not demanding it from God. I'm eternally grateful. I'm eternally grateful to him. It's granted to us and we should be grateful. You know, there's in Luke 13, there's a story of the woman that was bent over and she couldn't bent, straighten up. She was like this for 18 years and, and Jesus heals her of this and people were upset because he did it on the Sabbath. And he's like, man, if you had a donkey or an animal that fell, wouldn't you do something for them? You know, and, and he says, why not this woman, I love this, being, in other words, here's a reason why she is, she is allowed to have this being a daughter of Abraham, an heir of the promise of God, come on, through Abraham. This is, she's been like this, he says, think of it for 18 years. She's been going without. Did she get healed and go, well, it's about time. I've, I deserve this for 18 years. No, she, gave, she glorified God in heaven. Come on, be thankful. Be thankful. I'm thankful for the, the promises, but I'm, I'm so grateful. You know, thankfulness is a big deal with God. You know the story of the 10 lepers that were healed in Luke 17. It says uh, in verse 11, now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he, as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers, 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off because it was a culture. They, they weren't to come close. They had to yell out lepers, so they had to stay apart. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now remember, this is before uh, Jesus came and, and uh, died on the cross. He's there and they're calling out, have mercy on us. In other words, mercy, it's like pleading to the judge. I'm not deserving of it, but, but please give it to me out of your favor and your grace. And he heals them. He says his compassion, he healed them. He, his mercy was there. Verse 14, so when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourself to the priest. And this is so important because under the law, they had to, if they had leprosy and they were cleansed, everybody say cleansed. So in other words, if you still had your skin leprous, you wouldn't go to the priest because it's leprous. But if you were cured, if it seemed to be, well, you know, it's been a while now and I don't see any leprosy. I'm going to go now that I don't see it with my eyes to the priest and let him, he was the one that had to look at your hands and, and go, okay, you're clean. You can, you can go back into society now, you know, y'all with me? So he sees them and he tells them this as they, it says, uh, go show yourself to the priests, because that was a law. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. I love this story. Jesus said it. I don't see it yet, but I'm going to act as if it happened. 
and I'm going to the priest. Come on. Come on. I'm going to go to the doctor, and I'm going to expect him to say, hey, you know what? It was there, but it's not anymore. Come on, somebody give him praise. So, and one of them, as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. You know, listen, as you go through life and you're waiting on God to do something, just know in your, your, your mind and your spirit that God has already provided it for you. You don't see the manifestation of it, but you're expecting it to show up any time. And one of them, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. Uh, so I just get this picture of the guy, Jesus, have mercy on us. Go show yourself to the priest. Oh, that's awesome. And he's going to show, and as he's going, oh my gosh, my hands are, they're clean. He might not even got there yet, and he turns and comes back to Jesus to say, thank you, Jesus. I couldn't have done it without you. Come on. I'm eternally grateful. With a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan from the northern tribe of Israel that had intermingled with the Assyrians. And the the Jewish people thought that they were a uh, 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 mixed race and uh, defiled race. But yet he comes back and is forever grateful. Were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there nine? There were 10. Were, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. But there were nine that never came back to say thank you. Did they feel maybe they deserved it? I mean, they're crying out for mercy. Did they get too busy in life after the fact that they just said, you know what, uh, it's done. Listen, let's never get too busy in our life to tell him thank you. Come on. We couldn't have done it without you. It's a big deal. And I think about this story because Jesus is not like, oh, don't worry about it. Forget about it. It's not a big deal. You know, he's saying, where are they? Where are they? Where are we? When God shows up in our life that we don't get down and fall at his knees and fall down on our knees and say, Father, I'm eternally grateful. Thank you. That's an attitude that we need to have daily because I'm going to tell you, I don't care what day it is. I couldn't have done it without him. Come on, somebody. Number four, thankfulness is an expression of faith. You know, for example, you know, I mentioned my $800 window that became a $400 window. Thank you, Jesus, right? Now, on the phone, when I got the bid, they told me, because once I got the first bid and got up off the floor, (laughs) I I made another phone call to someone else. Well, when they called me back, they came out and measured. They called me back with the bid, and I was so grateful. And I said, so what do I do? Do you need a check, a credit card? They said, no, we'll take care of it. We'll order it, get it measured. We'll come out and install it. We'll take care of it after that. I'm like, thank you. Did y'all get that? I don't have the window in my house yet, but I'm thankful. But it's not there yet, but I believe it's going to be. And that's why I'm thankful. When I go to God and ask him for something, and his word tells me and I, what I, I have according to his will, I can read it, I can ask him for it in my prayer time, and then I get up and I go, thank you. I don't see it yet but it's an expression of my faith that he's going to come through as his word said. Come on. Listen, man will let you down. I hope my window's going to be there. Come on. I believe it is, but if if man will let you down, but we can put our confidence in God. Give him praise. Come on. Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing, but in every Uh, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. There's the key. We come to God through prayer. Supplication simply means request to God. And then we say, thank you. Why? Thank you. In Jesus name. Thank you. Because we take him at his word. Let your request be made known to God in the peace of God. See, I'm here's what I'm not doing. After I got off the phone with them and said, thank you, man, that's awesome. I got a great deal in the window. It's going to be in. I didn't go around the house going, oh, my goodness. I hope that window's coming. <laughs> I just don't know. Get up the next day. 
You know, they told me yesterday it was going to be, uh, they were going to get it, but I don't know, I don't know. Do you know, why do we do that with God? Come on. Why can we put more trust in man sometimes than we can God? They'll let you down, but God's forever faithful, amen? Colossians 4, 2, continue earnestly in prayer. Continue praying for the things that God has, has promised us. Continue, don't give up. Being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Amen? Thankfulness, number five, recognizes the source. He's our source of everything. Jehovah Jireh, come on. Jehovah Rapha. You know, you see people that win awards and as they should, they're thankful and they get up there and they take their trophy and they get up there and... I'm so thankful for this, and I couldn't have done it without those that helped me, you know, my mom and my dad and my producer, you know, my writer, thank them, you know, um, my girlfriend, my wife, you know, I mean, <laughs> my wife, <laughs> thankful, and, and God, I give God credit for this, come on, right, let's give God the first place. Come on. Let's give God the first place. Give honor where honor is due. James 1.17. Every good gift and every perfect gift. Listen, I know you're going to get gifts for Christmas and you're going to give them for Christmas and they may not be perfect, but you're still thankful. But God gives perfect gifts. Come on. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. In other words, he has not changed his mind about you and towards you. Give him praise for that. Come on. I love that. Listen to this. 1 Timothy 4.1. Now the Spirit ex expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which, listen, God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who receive and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused. So this is talking about giving thanks. You know, I pray before I eat my food. I'm thankful for it. You know, and, and, and I'm thankful because I'm recognizing that God is my source. He's my source. You know, I never want to get in the habit of, Lord, thank you for this food and moving on. And, you know, sometimes we get, you know, we're Christians, we're believers, so we pray over our, our food, and this is why we do it, because we're thankful. But it's really just talking about having an attitude of un that understands that everything that we have came from Him. Never want to get just in repetition but having a full awareness that he is my provider. I was thinking about this. You know, I'm, I'm 58 years old. I know I don't look it, but I'm 58 years old. look much older. <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, I don't know of one day in my life. This isn't true for everybody. I don't remember one day in my 58 years of life that I've gone hungry. I remember as a child, we would eat a lot of beans and rice and my mom used to make for dinner, she'd make scrambled eggs with green onions in it. I thought, man, that's awesome dinner. What it, what it was. She's opening up the refrigerator going, this is all I got, guys. But I didn't know it at the time. But in my 58 years, I've never gone hungry. And I don't know about you, but I try to eat every day. <laughs> Three times, four, five. I'm thankful that he's my source. I'm grateful to him. You know, I plan to eat today. <laughs> I made that plan this morning when I got up. <laughs> I I've never gone a day without eating. You know why? <laughs> because God is a good father. Come on. Yes. Listen, and maybe you can't say the same. Maybe you say, you know, there was a time when we were hungry, man. Maybe, there was, maybe it's now. I don't know, but can I tell you this? You're here today, and God's still alive, and we can be thankful because he's still your provider. Give him praise. Come on. Stand with me. 
Thankfulness is more than a day. It's more than a week of celebration with family and friends. It's an attitude every day. Ephesians 2.11, therefore remember that you once Gentiles, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised by what is called circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the, common, from the covenants of promise. In other words, here it says without hope, no hope. I'm thankful because there was a time that we were without hope, but because of God's goodness, sending his son, bringing it through the Jewish nation to everyone in the world, we have a lot to be thankful for. We have something to be thankful for, regardless of what else is going around, right? And I love the way it says this. It says, um, having no hope and without God in the world, in verse 13, I love this, but now... See, there was a time where we could, we could say, I'm not thankful. But now, because of Jesus Christ, we can be thankful. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Yeah. But now. You see, maybe you think, you know, I'm unacceptable to him. No, you're not. Because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, we thank you for your goodness. Father, help us to have a daily attitude of thankfulness. Yes, we have needs. Yes, we have challenges. But Father, we always have something to be thankful for. Our hope is alive. Father, we can't do it without you. We're dependent on you. Let our thankfulness acknowledge our dependency on you, our appreciation of you. Father, let it be an expression of our faith of the things we don't see yet, but we're thankful because we know that, Father, you are a God and your word is true, and you are our source, and we give you praise. With every head bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here today and you say, you know, I don't know that I have a lot to be thankful for. Well, let me tell you this. You could be thankful because God sent his only son to die for each and every one of us. No matter who we are and what we've done, we have hope in him. And that's something to be thankful for. If you're here today and you can't honestly say, Pastor, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I have accepted Jesus Christ and I'm going to spend eternity with him. If you can't honestly say that in your heart, then I want you to be able to do that, and here's how. And this is what we have to be thankful for, that we don't have to jump through hoops, that we don't have to walk according to every letter of the law. Listen, we're supposed to obey the law, but I'm saying that's not what brings us to God. It's faith in Jesus Christ, not by works, by faith in him. But if you're here today and say, you know what, I do have faith in him. I believe that God exists. I believe that he loves me, that he sent his son to die for me. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells us that if we believe that in our heart and confess it with our mouth, confess it with our mouth, then we're saved. I'm talking to everyone in this room and those watching online in overflow. If you want to accept Jesus Christ today, this is something you can be thankful for. Then I want to pray for you in just a moment, right where you are. Say a simple prayer. So if that's you and you'd say, Pastor Ron, would you pray for me? I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't want another day to go by where I don't know where I stand with him. I want to know that I know that I know. If that's you, would you just lift your hand? I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. So that's me. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't want another, God, I don't want another day. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I don't want another day to go by. Let's all say this prayer. Say, Father God, I believe with all my heart that you exist, that you love me, and I take you at your word that says you sent your son to die for me, and because I believe that and confess it with my mouth, I'm saved, I'm redeemed, my sins are forgiven. I repent of all my sins, and Father, I ask you to help me from this day forward 
to hear your voice and to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Are you thankful? Give him praise if you're thankful. Hallelujah. Thanks again for tuning into our podcast. If you accepted Christ today, we are so excited for you. We want to invite you to text BORN AGAIN to 31996. We know that God has an incredible future for you, and we cannot wait to walk alongside you. If you would like to support this podcast and the ministry at The Light, you can give online at thelightcf.org. We love you, Light family. Have a great week.